everybody? So we're back talking some more Ahsoka on the channel, episode 6, Drop in the Night. Man, has it been an awesome run these last couple weeks talking about Ahsoka, delivering some epic Star Wars content. As much as I always love talking Star Wars, these last two weeks in particular have been extremely special. Most of all, last week, focusing on Ahsoka's journey, getting all these moments between her and Anakin. But now we're back on track with the story with Ahsoka going to save Sabine and trying to stop all these bad guys from trying to bring back Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now it is kind of interesting looking at this episode as a big fan of Star Wars Rebels because as a huge fan of Star Wars Rebels, there's a lot more here that I'm excited for. But if I'm looking at it as an Ahsoka fan, I do feel kind of bad given the fact the show is called Ahsoka and Ahsoka is barely even in the episode. Ahsoka pretty much opens the episode and then you don't see her again the entire time, which is weird when she is supposed to be the main character of the show. It's a Sabine episode. Regardless, I did enjoy the brief sequence Ahsoka did have discussing everything with Hu Yang about her situation with Sabine and how she willingly went with Morgan Elsbeth Balin and them. It's just wild that's all we get of Ahsoka this week. It seems like what we build up in episode 6 however, it's going to be a pretty exciting episode 7 and 8. I mean, we don't have too many episodes left. Since they did get a bit of a head start, it's not surprising that Morgan Elsbeth and them did make it to Peridia. Once they land, we aren't greeted with Thrawn just yet. We are building up to Grand Admiral Thrawn. In their place, however, I was hyped because we got to see the live action debut of the Knights sisters. That stuff, it's just cool as a longtime Star Wars fan to see this in live action. Ever since this series began, one of the biggest elements I've loved about this show is we're peeling back the layers almost every single week on Balin's skull as a character, and that does continue once we do land on Peridia. Over the course of the episode, I just find him to be such a fascinating character as we learn more about him. Whether it's recollecting stories to Shin, his past, and what he misses from those days, and hoping he's able to break the cycle by aligning with Thrawn in this battle. I'm really curious what we're going to be doing with this character by season's end, because I I don't think necessarily he's evil whatsoever. He seems to have some good intentions. I mean, he was a Jedi at one point in time. So who knows? All I know is I love Ray Stevenson as this character, and I just wish that he was alive to see everyone praising him for his performance. One of the most badass things that came out of this week was the appearance of Grand Admiral Thrawn, especially because he returns in the Star Destroyer that him and Ezra were shipped off in. I mean, at the end of Rebels, that's the exact same Star Destroyer. Now it's just repaired. Even if we had already seen visually what Grand Admiral Thrawn would look like in live action since they showed what he looked like in the trailer. I think it's a great translation into live action. You're never really sure if these characters, especially when it's the same actor doing the live action interpretation, if it's going to translate perfectly. And I think he does a great job bringing this character to life in the show. The look and feel is there and he comes across as the exact same tactical mastermind that he was in Star Wars Rebels. It does crack me up a little bit that live action Grand Admiral Thrawn looks a lot like Elon Musk. Regardless of the fact that it was brief, it was pretty cool the fact that Sabine and Thrawn are meeting once again after the end of Star Wars Rebels and for the first time in live action. Before Thrawn allows Sabine to go off and search for Ezra, Thrawn being forever tactical, why not just let Sabine go off and find Ezra for them so they can just kill both of them? Also, I think it is kind of odd how we kind of just gloss over the fact that Ezra and Thrawn came together. I don't know how they got separated and they don't know where each other is. Maybe eventually we'll get a flashback later on, but I would love to know how they both managed to crash here and be separated. I mean, it, there's not a lot going on on this planet, it looks like. It seems like no matter what galaxy you're in, as long as you're in Star Wars, there's going to be bandits that are going to be out to try and kill you and take all your stuff, and weird, cute creatures out in the wild as well. Since we get to see both of them, while Sabine's on this adventure through the wilderness to try and hopefully find Ezra out there. The little creatures, the little notesy that we see, I think those things are adorable. These little crab, hermit crab like creatures. I would like buy a plushie of those. That's probably what their intent is with showcasing these characters. They seem like a pretty fun time when we get to see their little settlement. Thankfully when we get to their settlement, we get to see the reunion that we've all been waiting for. The reunion between Sabine and Ezra. It took me a minute to realize that that was Ezra just because, first of all, we have only seen Ezra once in this show in live action. He was a little teeny little hologram version of him and he didn't have a beard and long hair. So it took me a second but I mean what, who else would it be? There's not too much of the reunion but it's just great to see these characters reunite after so much turmoil. I am excited for next week after what we tease because of course since there was basically no Ahsoka in this week's episode it means she's definitely going to be a major force next week since the Knight Sisters are alerting Admiral Thrawn and everyone of her imminent arrival. So that's going to 
be very exciting. Overall, I still enjoyed this week's episode. I just think it's very bizarre when your show is called Ahsoka to only have Ahsoka be in the very beginning of the episode. It's kind of similar to what happened in the Book of Boba Fett, where the show was literally just overtaken by the Mandalorian for two episodes. But I've heard my thoughts on episode six. Make sure you share your thoughts down below. How did you feel about Ahsoka episode six? Did you like the episode? Did you not like the episode? Share any thoughts or theories you may have where we're going to go in next week's episode. Because part of the fun is having that conversation with you guys in the comment section down below. And thank you guys as always for the videos. I always do appreciate it. Make sure you like on the video and also subscribe to the channel so you update reviews, reactions, unboxings, and more. Next time, I'll see you guys later.